Ave Maria, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'd like to speak to you today about the mystery that we celebrate today, the Annunciation to our Blessed Mother and the Incarnation of the Son of God in her womb. In today's Gospel, we hear Mary saying, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Fiat mihi secundum verbum tuum, we read in the Latin Vulgate. Fiat is the Latin word for may it be done. And Bible commentators have at length pondered these words of our Blessed Mother and their meaning and their consequences. St. Anselm, one of the doctors of the church, says that her humble fiat those humble words of hers, may it be done. That humble fiat was the complement of the Creator's almighty fiat spoken in the book of Genesis when God began to create the heavens and the earth, each time saying, let it be done. This time issuing when Our Lady said these words, this time issuing not simply in a work of God, but in the most perfect work of God, the incarnation of the Son of God. And it issued from the mouth of Our Lady as obedient to God's will. And Christ became her Son, obedient to his mother's fiat, as to the will of his Heavenly Father. We can say that Mary's fiat, Mary's words, let it be done, make Christ happen. They make Christ become. They make Christ be done. St. Anselm, quoting him again, says, God then is the father of the created world and Mary the mother of the recreated world. Her words of consent usher in the new economy of grace. God is the Father by whom all things were given life, and Mary the Mother through whom all things were given new life. For God begot the Son through whom all things were made, and Mary gave birth to him as the Savior of the world. Without God's Son, nothing could exist. Without Mary's Son, nothing could be redeemed. The redemption itself hinged on the consent of our Blessed Mother. So God willed it. Truly the Lord is with you, to whom the Lord granted that all nature should owe as much to you as to himself. Brothers and sisters, Our Lady cannot be absent from our spiritual lives. If we want Christ to happen in our spiritual lives, In fact, we have spiritual lives to begin with. We have God's grace to begin with because of her words of consent, let it be done to me. And our spiritual lives will develop only in the measure that we make Our Lady enter into them. And only in the measure that we surrender ourselves completely to Our Lady's action of forming Christ in us. Only if we give ourselves completely to her as her possession, her property, if we recognize ourselves as her children and her as our mother, and we let, and we let her act freely in us. And the outcome, we can be sure, will always be the same as the outcome of her first consent, so the outcome of her entering into our lives will be the same. The perfect Christification, the perfect formation of Christ in us. Mary's fiat today still makes Christ happen in us. As St. Louis de Montfort says, and with this we conclude, remember what I told you before, that Mary is the great, unique mold of God, designed to make living images of God at little expense and in a short time. Anyone who finds this mold and casts himself into it is soon transformed into our Lord because it is the true likeness of him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Our Lady cannot be absent from our spiritual lives if we want Christ to be present, if you want Christ to happen in our spiritual lives. Let's recognize ourselves as her children and let us give her our consent to act freely in us. Ave Maria.